for the arts. Unfortunately, the grants do not cover operating expenses to keep our doors open. So just something to keep in mind as we are going through some very difficult times. But enough of that for now, and all the way from Morris, Illinois, we have Tony the Voice. Thank you for coming. And on this unpresidential time, unprecedented time, um, we all have to make a change. <laughs>
Hearing Up by Kurt Bauer. <laughs> this one's, let's do uh, Tomorrowless for Words. After I get my Kurt Bauer soul number. Here it is. The Spin.
a little bit about Tony. Tony was born 46 years ago, weighing one pound and three quarters of wow. pounds. I can literally hold them in the palm of my hand. He technically died 12 times his first day of life. I brought him home from the hospital and he turned black on me. We had to call the ambulance who did not even know how to care for somebody that small. I moved him out of my way and gave him CPR myself. But here he is. Well, this is your he was diagnosed as being totally blind when he was six months old. He was diagnosed as being autistic when he was five years old. And when he was 15, we found out that he also had Savant syndrome. At that time, there was believed to be three people in the world that could that had that were prodigious musical savants. What the character in Rain Man can do with math, Tony can do with music. They did a an MRI on him and they played music to him and his brain just lit up like wild. They sang, played that same music to him. Nothing. It's like his brain said, I already know that. Don't bother me. Tony <laughs> <laughs> has a repertoire of over 10,000 pieces right. of music. He plays 23 musical instruments, and he sings in 11 languages. Oh my God. Tony never had conversational speech until after he was at Berkeley College of Music. Then he could not consistently answer yes no questions even. And they said well, he won a scholarship. It just so happened that he was the only person in the jazz ensemble at the jazz festival that had his back to the judges. They did not know he was flying or autistic. What a scholarship. The first year, they gave him a certificate of musicianship. And his teacher says, oh, you know, they just kind of gave it to him. You know, because he's blind. The next year, he went back and won a certificate of musicianship and a $500 scholarship to go to a six-week program at Berkeley College of Music. Well, Tony was at Perkins School for the Blind, and our town said that they weren't paying for college, and that Tony would lose so much if he went to that Berkeley school for six weeks. I took our town to hearing, and I won. The difference between what I wanted and what the school wanted was one hundred dollars. They chose to fight me over that for that six-week program. They ended up having to pay for Berkeley College of Music, the music school, which is where he was taking jazz, and Kirkland School for the Blind. They had to provide transportation to all three places. They had to provide him with an aid to go with him to Berkeley College in DC, a mobility instructor to go with him to the music school at Rivers, 
transportation to all three places. And they had to pay the tuition to all three places. And they had to pay all of my attorney's fees. What a victory. Cody ended up, after we, after we went through all this, Berkeley says to me, well, he, he then, after he went to school, then his ensemble played again, and they gave the school a $1,000 scholarship to give to their most deserving student, which they turned around and gave Tony. Berkeley had a rule that in order to go to Berkeley, you had to be able to sight read. <laughs> <laughs> Tony ended up sucking out of all of his ear training classes. And they asked me, since Tony didn't have conversational speech and couldn't answer yes or no questions, how are we going to test him? I said, it's simple. You have to need to be able to ask questions in such a way that Tony can play the answer on a keyboard. Right. Mm -hmm. Are you testing whether he can read or write? Or are you testing whether he knows music theory? So imagine your surprise when Tony ended up Graduating. He, not only graduated, he gained conversational speech while he was there and graduated magna cum laude. So, we're going to take a break now, Tony. We're going to do a 15 minute break. Then we'll come back and do some more. We have CDs in the back. Tony has eight CDs out. You know, this is amazing. I just wanted to take a few minutes just to tell you a little bit about the Red Rock Center and what we've been through since this pandemic. Um, we had an artist reception in March, and the day after that artist reception, we decided that we needed to close um, to the public. That was right around March 16th. By April, I believe it was April, I was laid off. Um, I was laid off until I, was, I came back last month part-time to start organizing and figuring out how we were going to safely bring people back. And I have to say I'm very pleased. Uh, I was thinking, how am I going to get all these people six feet apart? But I think we've been successful and everybody's masking up and doing what they need to do, so I appreciate that. Um, but just a little bit about what has happened. In May, we have graduations. And we lost, I believe it was 18 graduation parties. So as you can imagine, that's a big part of our income. Uh, we lost three weddings this summer. Um, we lost all of our rentals. Since March, we had two. Uh, we had a baby shower of 15, and we had a bridal shower of about 40. So pretty much all of our income over the summer, the spring was gone. Um, things are not looking much better. We do have a couple Christmas parties booked. That is probably our second biggest time of the year is we have a lot of companies that have their employees here for Christmas parties, but few and far between. Few and far between. One thing I'm very grateful for is um, Prairie Lakes Regional Arts Council. And they fund the arts. So we're excited to be able to bring people like Tony and you know our visual artists, more performers, and that's all funded by the arts. But the flip side of that is the arts funding only pays for arts funding. And the electricity that it costs 
to have the arts programming. So there's nothing other than contributors. And let me tell you, we've had some wonderful contributors. We've had some really great people that have helped us through these difficult times. But it's those people, it's our community, it's our businesses, and we know our businesses have been hit hard. But it's, it's people like you, and it's people, people out there who appreciate what we do that really helps us keep our doors open. So I know a lot of people say, well, we must be doing okay because we're having all these entertainers come in. Well, grants are paying for our entertainers. They're paying for Shelly to be here to videotape so we can get these concerts into the nursing homes, the assisted livings, and the shut-ins. But we still need the support of the community to keep our doors open, to pay our electric bills. Like I said, I'm back part-time now, and uh, my assistant may be coming back for a few hours here soon, too. So we're trying to keep things going as much as possible and as safely as possible. Uh, we're supposed to have our second concert October 24th. I did find out yesterday they canceled the tour. So we're probably going to have find someone comparable and do something on the 24th still, hopefully, or right around that date. Um, Glenn Hendrickson, how many of you are familiar with Glenn? <laughs> the bad news about Glenn Hendrickson is I think there's about 30 people in this room. Glenn Hendrickson, we have 180. So needless to say, Glenn Hendrickson probably is not going to be open to the public. Um, my thought is it's going to be open for members only. So if you're interested in a membership, we do have membership opportunities available. They're $20 a person for a senior, military, or... What am I missing? Oh, student. Any students in here? I think there might be some seniors in some military. So $20 for a senior membership, $25 for a regular membership. And hopefully that will get you in the door of Glenn Henderson. I know we have some early birds, so don't worry. You'll be here for Glenn. <laughs> but um, we still have to see what happens. That Glenn's concert is scheduled for December 11th. So we'll see what happens. Because we cannot have 175 people here. About 30 is what, we're, what we can do. So there is a basket in the back. So on your way out the door, I'm going to move it by the door there. So if you want to drop a few extra dollars, some pocket change, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, membership opportunities. You can fill it out and drop it in. Um, I'll be here at the end. So enough about Red Rock and what we've gone through and more about Tony. Yeah. Well, we've got the second half of the program. I'm going to start with Morning Has Broken, which is a church hymn. I'll play the violin right now. So cat, I mean you like Cat Stevens.
star I'm going to do by myself. It's about my, it's about dreams. And then Tony's back. <laughs>
Bridget.